Well, hello, my friends. Happy Sunday. It's Sean Petit, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Look at that cutie, the angel of strength. Oh, she's so much fun to create. So I have an 8x10 MDF board out, and I'm not starting with any paper. What? So I have got black gesso and white gesso out, and I'm mixing them together to get a kind of a grayish um, background. And gesso is good, one, to prime the wood and get everything sealed, and also to give me a nice ground, because typically I use matte medium to put papers down. Um, and so since I don't have that, this is going to prep the wood and give me a good foundation for the layers to come, and that's what gesso is for. So black and white makes a great um, um, background for creating some fun patterns. So I've just got some um, regular gesso out, and I'm just using my finger. I started with my finger, and now I'm using a brush. But what I want to do, whether you use your finger or a brush, is just push that gesso up against the sides of that stencil so that it gives you some texture. And I'm using, looking for subtle texture um, for the background so that when I put the additional layers over the top, um, you'll be the, it'll be able to stand out to catch some of the other paint um, I can pull some of that paint off and reveal some of that white so I'm just trying to push that gesso up against the sides not get a real clean um, stencil and these stencils are all the new stencils from the spring stencil launch this is little crosses the others modern pattern um, I just love them so much fun this is the modern cross um, stencil and I love how I wasn't thinking about exactly where things were going. I was just trying to kind of get balance here as I was stenciling out and it, I love when things turn out just right so that one pattern ends up being kind of like a halo around her, um, the angel's head. So now that I've got everything gessoed and stenciled out, I am dry. I've grabbed some um, Prussian blue, which is oh, so rich and dreamy, yummy good. Um, it's a fluid deco art fluid acrylic, and I've got it watered down, and I'm just wiping it over the background and really messily, um, and then I'm just going to wipe it back. And I will wipe back with my rag and then get a clean rag and get some alcohol on there and continue to pull that back just to reveal to get that kind of blue tint in there um, and kind of highlight those stenciled areas and then I'll pull some more back um, just to kind of reveal that white so I've got a wonderful vintage paper here that I'm using for her skirt and I really wanted more of the text to show through and this is common for me to overdo it to overdo the layers i just get so carried away um so it her the the writing on this paper actually doesn't end up showing up but just in a tiny tiny few spots um, i probably could have done without this layer of the pressed paper but at the time i wasn't thinking about the um additional layer of raw umber and um, a glazing medium that I was going to put on in the end and so I knew that I wanted to push some of that writing back so that this stenciled patterns that I put on there would stand out and then I then I decided I was going to put a glaze over it and that kind of changed everything but that's how it goes that's how it how it works when you create and it all works um, for a reason. The, the paper provides wonderful texture um, to her skirt. So everything happens for a reason and it's all good. So I'm just sketching out a body and a skirt. You could use my um, wing and a prayer stencil. That would have been perfect too um, for this. I just grabbed some soft pastel and just kind of um, drew out kind of a shape but it's not even really a great shape I, but I didn't want it to be too uh, I just wanted to be it to be kind of straight and really flowy and I wanted to make sure that I could fit my my paper skirt in on top of there and so I just kind of got an idea of shape and size and then cut it out and then went back and really um, whittled it down to fit the size that I wanted it and that's what I'm doing now, just kind of sketching out where those lines actually are. 
And the stencil designs on the skirt, I did the same way, um, um, not as textural as the background. Um, and again, these stencils are part of the new stencils and all of the supplies are going to be listed on the blog and the link to the blog is down below in the YouTube, des do YouTube description box. So now I'm just taking some gesso and the reason I use gesso is because it just gives me a really flat um, textural kind of chalky feel. Um, you could use titanium white as well. Um, but I'm just um, filling in her body and I really wanted to try and blend her skirt and, the, and her um, upper body together. And so I'm just working to do that, get some shape, kind of redefine the body shape just a little bit. I added just a touch of quinacridone magenta to my white. I mean, just a tiny bit to give it a little bit of pink, pinkish hue. Um, now I've got, now that that's all dry, I've got my super heavy gesso out and those wonderful angel wings. These, you guys, are fantastic. I love these. I designed these from vintage pictures of angel wings, and I'm just thrilled with how they turned out. Oh, I just love them. I will use them over and over and over. But I'm, I'm just kind of um, heating that side and getting the top dry just a little bit so that I can put my stencil down and it not make an impression. And then I will let this dry overnight um, and just let it sit and be. Now that it's all dry, I'm coming back in with some gesso and I'm just going to really kind of further define everything at this point. I'm really kind of making her skirt and her body kind of flowy and glowy and angel-like. And really just trying to um, refine and define um, her body. And you can still see some of the writing in the paper here, but um, yeah, I put a, a lot of layers of glazing on here, but I, I, I wouldn't have done it any other way because the grungy goodness that happened makes me happy. So I've got my deco art glazing medium and some raw umber. And I'm just going to slather this whole piece with the mixture and pull it back and it's just the most delicious um, grungy texture. Oh, I just love it. Um, I wet my rag and pull it back. I'll even grab a little bit of alcohol to pull that back and just kind of really get it good and grungy. And, and then I'll come back and try and pull it off again on certain areas that I really want it to be a little bit wider because I don't want it to be all the same in all the areas. So in the places that I have stenciled, I want to try and highlight um, certain areas like on her skirt and different things like that. So I'll just continue to pull that back just a little bit to get it to where I want it and have bits and pieces of that grungy glaze just showing up and sitting in all of the cracks and crevices. It's just wonderful. So now I'm going to take my charcoal pencil and really draw in the details of her body around her head and face, shade around her wings, give it all that depth and dimension that really pulls um, her away from the background. Um, even though the background is dark, that shading still um, adds definition to her neckline, her clothes, her, her um, skirt and wings and all of that it really does help it make it makes it come alive
adding just a little bit of highlighting with my soft pastel. And I will come back in and add just a tiny bit of paint, but the, a, a pastel is a great way to add some color. If you're unsure, like I didn't know that if I wanted to add any highlights to her bodice or to her face, um, and this is just a really no fear way to get some color down and then you can come back over it with acrylic if you want or you can leave it just the way that it is and I, I left quite a bit the way that it was and just sprayed it with a fixative. So I'm just adding in her hair. I'm using Lucas's paint in caramel and raw umber. Using um, carmine red and caramel again, and some gesso. Um, adding some gesso to the colors to, to make them a little bit lighter. And um, just making her wreath around her head. Little dots, tiny little dots, that's all it is. And you can see now I'm coming back in with a little bit of gesso where I had originally done the pastels and I knew that I liked it and then just went over it with acrylic. So I knew that I wanted just a little bit more light and grunge to the background. And so I grabbed a square palette knife and the reason I chose this palette knife is one, because it's very small and it's square so I can really control the skipping and grunginess that I would be dragging down with the palette knife. Um, so I did that all the way around and once I did it all the way around, I was like, it's too uniform and I don't like it. <laughs> and so um, I solved that by adding some raw umber wash to it in different spots, um, not all over the place. So you'll see once I get done with the palette knife, I'm trying to figure out, okay, do I like it? Do I not like it? So I come back in with just a wash of raw umber and tone down, not every single area, but just parts of it again so that there's some variety so that it all doesn't look the same and um, so uniform. I wanted it to look natural and organic and like a grungy wall but when it was all white and all the same it just it I needed to tone it down just a bit so just in certain spots I'm adding that raw umber wash and I liked it so much that I added a few more spots and I love it. That's the that's the creative process. You do something with the hopes of maybe liking it or fixing something, and you end up discovering something new and um, using it again and again. So I'm going to paint in her heart. Um, and I decided to go with gold because I really, it, the piece was relatively neutral and um, I wanted the eye to be drawn right there to her word um, that describes our angel of strength. And um, that's what I did. I used a little bit of gold there and on her wings and then I will shade around that and around the edges and that's it. It's super easy. I just love it. Um, stick around for the conversation at the end. It's a good one about our strength and how our strength is different from everybody else's strength. It's unique to us. 
So um, stick around for that conversation. And then um, I, if you enjoyed today's project, subscribe and like so that you never miss a video. And you can check out all of the links to the supplies down below in the YouTube description box. All right, my friends, I will see you next week. Well, hello, my loves, and happy Sunday to you. I could not be happier with this grungy, yummy goodness. I am so, so thrilled with how the new Angel Wing stencils turned out. They're just fantastic. Ah, the grungy goodness on this is just amazing. I went over everything in the video. I love this gold heart, just that little touch of gold. And then I just I hope you can see some of that on the wings. It's just a tiny bit, but it's like, it's magic. It's just so good. Grungy, yummy goodness. Um, before I dive into the message, I just want to remind you that the new spring stencils are now available. And these are some of the projects that I did with the spring stencils. I have a video out that um, I share the, the stencils and the projects that I did. And um, then in that same video, we create some really awesome collage papers um, that, and I show you my kind of sandwich technique for creating collage papers, and I'm using the new stencils as well. And I, I use these kinds of papers for everything. And so like this here was something like this, and I just, you know, added the black to it and um, some additional flower stencils and then this is the new um, wreath stencil uh, I just I'm so pleased with the new stencils so you can um, I will have a link up above in the video um, to that video that you can watch the process of creating some collage papers and background journal pages and that kind of thing um, and check out the new stencils I hope you take a look there's a bunch of six by sixes and smaller ones, um, large ones, just a really great variety of stencils. So check all of those out. And the link to all of that's going to be down below um, in the YouTube description box. And the video link will be above um, on the video. Okie dokie. So this is the Angel of Strength. And um, I... I'm always inspired by your comments and by your reaching out to me and sharing your story. And um, I, I got an email that um, someone was kind of sharing their story and she just felt like she needed to be stronger in the face of her adversity. And I just felt like, you know, each one of our strengths are our strengths alone. And I just want to remind you not to compare yourself with someone else and your journey with someone else's. Your strength today might be just getting out of bed and that was all the strength that you had today. And then tomorrow it might be getting out of bed and getting dressed. Um, it, and, and, you know, as long as we don't stay stuck in, in some of those places, but our strength is individual and how we show up in the world and how we show our strength is so, so very different. And your circumstances are very different than somebody else's circumstances. And um, what I might be showing, what I might be needing strength for, maybe... Um, and I don't want to say smaller or more trivial, because to each person, our um, journey is our own. And it's um, hard to each of us individually in our own way. And I just want to encourage you on your journey, whatever that journey is, whether it be art or whether it be um, relationships, or maybe there's been a loss or you're dealing with sickness or um 
there's just so many things. Your strength is yours and it looks so very, very different than anybody else's. And no one, no one has the right to judge you or tell you how your strength is supposed to look. Um, we can, I can encourage you and guide you and all of those things, but I don't know your situation and neither does anybody else. And so I just want to encourage you to show up in your strength, in your situation, the way you would and not the way that anybody else would because you are special and unique and so is your situation, your struggle, your anxiety. I mean, we've there's just so many things. Anxiety and all of our life stories and childhoods and things like there's just so many things that come into play when somebody can say, well, just show up and step up and that kind of thing. Sometimes there's just a lot more to it. Or maybe that person that says step up and show up has already done the work, has already seen a therapist, has have already dealt with the hurt or the fear or the doubt or all of those things. And so we're all on a different track. We're all maybe headed in the right direction or the same direction, I should say. But we're just in different places. And we cannot compare our walk, our journey, our story to anybody else's. Your strength is your own. And, and you, my love, you are strong. You're strong enough to handle whatever it is. And how you do that is up to you. And how it looks is your story. So, lovies, be strong today. I know how strong you are. And I, I hear oh so many stories of the things that you are going through and I just want to love on you and hug you and I pray for you guys every time I get a message or an email or a text or anything like that and if I say I'm praying for you I stop and I pray and um, you might not believe in prayer you can say the you're saying good thoughts to the universe whatever you want to call it um, I just, I, I do that for you so that you can show up in your strength and battle your battles. All right, my loves, have a wonderful Sunday. Um, get some rest. Find your strength and always, always know that you are loved.